Okay, so I'm gonna show you two short clips from two different games. Both of them contain some sort of jump scare, so be warned. Now, one of them is an expertly crafted piece of horror from a game that doesn't even try and call itself a horror game. And one of them is a cheap, overused, overplayed jump scare that does nothing more than prey upon your base instincts to jump at sudden changes and loud noises. You tell me which one's which, right? Three, two, one. Go. The first clip was from Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, and the second clip was from the Outer Wilds DLC, Echoes of the Eye. Now, as you've all probably guessed, the second clip is the one that I think is really well done. There's one simple reason that Outer Wilds' horror sections are, in my opinion, much better crafted and much scarier than things like Five Nights at Freddy's jump scares will ever be. And that's because the horror in Outer Wilds is organic. Watch this clip back again. As you turn the corner, the game grabs your screen and forcibly focuses it on the enemy as fast as possible. In fact, I counted and I'm pretty sure it takes just four frames to go from having control of your character to your screen turning 180 to look at the enemy. It then plays a generic scream that every single jump scare in the entire game is also accompanied by. That scream is reused everywhere in the whole game. The problem is that none of this is organic, none of this naturally occurred. The enemy screaming in your face isn't actually scary at all. You're just having a fight or flight response to a loud noise and a sudden change on your screen. Sure, the game tries to make the atmosphere in these sections scary, but despite that, I would wager that most people that play this game don't find the game itself particularly scary at all. What they're actually feeling is the nervous anticipation that someone is going to jump out from around a corner and say BOO! Is the game really scary, or are you just anxiously wondering which corner you have to turn before the game screams in your face? But now let's compare this to segments in Outer Wilds. The next part of this video will contain some spoilers for Outer Wilds and its DLC, and this game is a masterpiece, so I'd highly recommend you play it before watching, but here's your fair warning. 3, 2, 1. In Echoes of the Eye, these dark sections, when you're trying to evade the strangers, are scary in a much more natural way. They linger in the dark, minding their own business, but when they're alerted to your presence, they'll come looking for you. The world is so dark that their lantern is really all you can see through the darkness. Sometimes you can see their eyes beaming through the dark, and when they catch you, they don't instantaneously grip your camera and scream in your face. Instead, it's a much more slow and ominous thing. It's suspenseful. It's a moment that feels like it lasts an eternity, instead of a moment that feels like an unearned half a second of sensory overload. And the best part is that the first time when you get caught, you're thinking, oh god, he's gonna bite my head off, look at his face, oh my god, oh sh**. And then he just blows your lantern out. It fulfills the same role as a jump scare, but it doesn't use any cheap tactics to grab your attention or scare you in an unnatural or inorganic way. And they don't even have to kill you for it to be scary that you might get caught by them. And this isn't just unique to the DLC for Our Wilds, it's also present in the base game. At the far reaches of the solar system, there is the Dark Bramble. Inside the Dark Bramble, there's a number of very, very large anglerfish that lay in wait inside the fog. And every single new player that ever plays this game will go into Dark Bramble gleefully wanting to explore the world they're in, only to get the fright of their lives when these enormous jaws emerge from the fog. And because of the way the progression works in Outer Wilds, these anglerfish seem like insurmountable enemies in the solar system at first. But this game is all about knowledge, it's about learning. Learning about the world, learning about the game's mechanics, learning about the story. 
So once you learn that the anglerfish are entirely blind and can only hear you, you can then start really exploring the dark bramble without getting eaten by giant scary spooky fish. But before you find the big reveal of the anglerfish's one weakness, you'll probably avoid the dark bramble for a long time, because you don't know how to not get jump scared by the enormous anglerfish that awaits you there. The fear comes from the unknown, you don't know how these enemies work. And when you do know how they work, the fear instead comes from whether your plan to slowly drift past them will actually work. So you just sit tight, holding your breath, hoping that they don't notice you. It's honestly incredible how well the Dark Bramble segments are set up and then paid off in a game that's so non-linear. But knowing what lives inside this planet makes the harrowing discovery of the harmonica coming from within the Bramble all the more terrifying. Funnily enough, this cute little adventure game that doesn't advertise itself at all as a horror game is a masterclass in horror design, because it's easy to make a jump scare in a dark room that grabs your camera and screams in your face, but making the player feel genuine terror without screaming in their face is a whole other story. Thanks for watching.